the new world order. Those are the roots of trouble. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice, tumbling down the rabbit hole. Hmm? Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to be. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Well, we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of election, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. But I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. And now, welcome to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. Here's your host from FederalJack.com. It's Popeye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's live edition. It is July 16th, 2013. As normal, the first segment here is quick. It's about two and a half minutes. So real quick, I'll bring up my guest. And then uh, the next long segment, we're going to just get into the topic of tonight and start tearing it apart. I have a few other things I, I want to get into with him too. But we're going to spend some time on tonight's topic because we have to. We, we have no other choice. We would like to move on to other things. But we can't because uh, of all the garbage being thrown about on the airwaves and on the, on the TV. So we have to... Come on air tonight, and we have to debunk a lot of this garbage. I'm talking about the race baiting and the division and all this other stuff. So to do this with me tonight, to do this properly, to do this debunking of the divisionary tactics some justice, I'm bringing on board my friend, uh, my sometimes guest co-host who sits here with me. Uh, he's a host in his own right, an all-around really good guy, and he's like a brother to me. You all know I like to bust his chops, but uh, he really is a good guy. Mr. Joe Jostiff. What up, brother? Hey, man, what's going on? Dude, I know you're as pissed as I am. D um... That's an understatement. That's why we decided to do this tonight. Because, yes, uh, because one hour just wasn't enough. No. Doing it on my broadcast, we need to do, uh, go into at least hour two, if not three. Well, dude, this, this is a real serious topic. I don't, I don't think people understand what's going on. I see a lot of well-intentioned, uh, smart people that we both know right? that are usually awake to a lot of things and hip to diversionary tactics and things. I see a lot of them buying into the... The, the garbage on both ends of this and, and taking, you know, I'm taking a side because of, and it's an emotional response. And I'm like, wow, it, yep. it, it, if the smart people can get played, we got a problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, well, yeah, that's true. But, you know, really, if you think about it, it's because there has been a lot of hurt and there is a lot of pain and there is a lot of suffering that goes on. But, what people don't realize is that slavery never really went away. You see, now we're all slaves. Yeah, so we were just kind of folded in. Yeah, it just so looks different. That's, that's all. right. There's, there's no racial separation. We're all slaves. You got that right. We're getting to that and more when we come back. Don't go anywhere. 59 short seconds. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. So, if you have a television 
or radio, I'm sure you've been exposed to uh, the result of the Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman uh, case, because uh, I think it was Saturday when he was found not guilty. And uh, I believe the media was actually really caught off guard. You could see it because I think they thought this was going to go into the week. I didn't think, I don't think that they thought it was going to come to fruition uh, over the weekend because it, that's a, even though they, they did special broadcasts and stuff on it, it was still, it's not part of the regular news cycle. So I knew that come yesterday, it was going to be bad. I mean, Sunday was bad enough, but I knew come Monday, it was going to be all over the place. And man, they did not let me down on my expectations. And everybody and their mother is coming out. You got Jesse Jackson wanting the UN to investigate this. First of all, Jesse, the UN has no jurisdiction looking into a criminal case here in the United States. Perhaps you should actually learn some of this stuff before you open your mouth publicly and make yourself look like a bigger ass than you already are. That's one. Two, you have the media by itself, just every media channel. I mean, Joe, is there any journalistic integrity? Because I don't see any. I mean, this is, I, obviously, there's an agenda. <laughs> uh, no, no, well, th- th- maybe, or perhaps, perhaps, it is a very small minority that, that actually does this, because what I'm coming to find out is most of the people in the media are complete and total idiots that just read things off a teleprompter, like, we too low, and holy fook. <laughs> I mean, come on. They just read. They, they just read what's fed to them. They don't even know what they're reading. They're just reading it just to read it. Ah, it's amazing. But up at the top lurks that person, that devious person. And it's not just in the media. It's in your. It's in your churches, and it's in corporate America, and it's anywhere you go. You know, that's the thing. Is you know, money corrupts, and um, <laughs> where there's money and a way to have an easy life. There's going to be people vying for that. Uh, and if you're standing in their way, they're going to want you out of the way. That's what this new world order is. I mean, that's what it's all about. And there's nothing new about it. It's been around for a long time. The, the issue is, is that they use these events like uh, this, uh, latest, uh, scan, or this latest trial with, with uh, Zimmerman and Martin. And they use it to their advantage. And they play us. They play us by saying, you know, well, what race are you, uh, human? Yeah, that's that's not an option on on this form here. Would would you mind? Uh, I I'm not any of it. I'm not any of these. Well, what do you mean? Well, there's only one race on the planet, human race. Um, I didn't know that there was a white race, black race. Where are they? trying to figure that out there's different cultures different cultures based on your eth you know your ethnicity you know almost like uh you know you got your italians you got your irish you got people of african descent but where were you born where were you born w- w- what happened to this country seriously yeah. where were be- you born be- because do, do people realize what's going on? Do people realize that? Uh, and Jesse Jackson and these sellout scumbags know this. And I, I played May Brussels broadcast uh, the other uh, last week, uh, one of the nights last week. I played her broadcast on the King Alfred plan, and this is 1978, April. Oh, was that a follow up to your Prince Edward plan? Yeah, idiot. <laughs> and <laughs> an idiot. And uh, this is in '78, and she was calling Jesse Jackson out back then. You know, in the in the late seventies. So I mean, he's he's been ineffective as a real leader for a very long time. He's been compromised. Uh, th- this guy's a sellout turd. All of them are. Uh, none of them actually care about the, uh, the the black people like they like they pretend to. I and mean, if they did, would they uh, would they allow? Let me ask you this: If these black leaders that, uh, who know what I'm about to say. If they really cared about the black culture, would they have allowed what was marketed to it, crack cocaine and the gangster rap crap that was marketed to it on purpose to help segment that cu- the culture 
and marginalize it and create what they've created today. Don't you think if Martin Luther King Jr. and real stand-up black leaders were still standing up, not these fake compromised people, which again, May Russell was calling out back in 1978, right. right? If these people were really standing up, do you think that the, the black community, would the, the culture, the, the younger culture anyway, would be the way it is with the thuggery and all that crap? No. Did you see that kind of stuff back in the 50s and in the 60s when Martin Luther King and that, that generation of, the, you know, the stand-up real leaders, did, did you actually see them walking around, sagging their pants, talking stupid, coming up with, the, you know, we, we like Ebonics, we, we're proud of it, we, uh, being uneducated, not knowing the meaning of words, not even being able to pronounce words fully and I'm not I'm not saying all black people like that. I'm saying that's the, the thugs and stuff, that thuggish culture that they've that's been created over the past twenty years, that wouldn't have even been created if you had people like Martin Luther King Jr. around. Because you would have had positive black leaders, not these sellouts like Jesse Jackson, who allowed that kind of stuff to happen, who did not try to step in and, and say anything and actually put a stop to it and have yeah. some sort of positive influence on the black culture. And I know a lot of older Black, the, a lot of the older uh, generation in the black community will understand what I'm talking about. The younger ones might get, you know, well, you're a white guy. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, no, I do know what I'm talking about, okay? And first of all, anybody that would say, you're just white, uh, I'm a mutt. I'm actually, I have Sicilian, Irish, if anybody knows what that means when you have Sicilian in you. It also means that I have somewhere along the family tree, there are black people in my family. Uh, I have Irish people. I have Dutch. I have German. I have American Indian. I'm a mutt. I really don't care. Okay, my, my skin's kind of white, but I'm also covered from head to toe in tattoos, so I really guess I'm not really white. I'm multicolored. But... Uh, you know, I, that stuff to me, I don't care about that stuff, and other people shouldn't either. Okay, people should look past it. The problem is we're, uh, we're, we're very we're, – humans are very easily swayed. We're very easily manipulated. And if we don't understand how we're being manipulated and, and how cultures and subcultures are created, then we're doomed to keep repeating the cycle over and over and over again. Isn't it funny that we're kind of like lemmings in a way? Dude, it's I really mean, sad. It, it is. Yeah, it is sad that, that the, the human race more or less will do whatever the heck you know, the, the other guy is doing. It's a very, very large majority of followers and a very small minor, a minority of leaders, real leaders, you know, MLK being one of them. Why do you and, think they killed him? Well, of course. I mean, think about it. Oh, God, RFK and, J and MLK uh, running on the same ticket? Whoa, no, can't have that. And, and, and I'm telling you, if it, when he was killed, there were, and there was a lot of people that were compromised, may, may call hey, who, who was there, by the way? Oh, Jesse Jackson. Oh, who, who yeah, smeared right. who smeared MLK's blood on him and is known for doing this and is a known turd, Jesse Jackson. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have no respect for the man. He's he's counsel on foreign relations puppet. Um he is just garbage. I mean, if he's like the the uh, the human epitome of trash. Um uh, you know, May Brussel asked, well, "What about Martin Luther King Jr.'s brother? Well, you know, his sudden death afterwards." And there was there was a bunch of other sudden deaths of people that wouldn't you know go along or had questions about uh, m you know Martin's death. They suddenly died not too long after, and and you know the questions are never raised. There's, uh, I think it was his niece, if I remember correctly, uh, that came out, and she's pretty been pretty vocal. She came out last year and said that. Um, uh, Jesse Jackson and uh, Sharpton needed to stop race baiting because that's what they're doing. Look, let's be real. This is not the 60s, okay? There was a period of time where there was a racist bunch of ignorant ramuses in this country that saw, couldn't see past the color of someone's skin. You're right. It was a horrific time where there were people that were subjugated. There, were, there was torture. But let's not forget that it wasn't white people that went over and just snagged them from Africa. It was black people in Africa that sold them to, to, to the white people as slaves. So let's get the, the truth straight, okay? So there, there, there's blame everywhere is what I'm saying. The point is, it happened in the past. I had family that was in concentration camps that were run by the Germans. Do I walk around kicking Germans randomly in the face going, you Nazi piece of shit, and punch him in the face? No, because that would be ignorant of me. He was probably not around when that happened. He had no say in that. Most of the people today would find slavery what happened in the past and 
the segregation that happened in the past abhorrent, okay? And they would realize that it's wrong. So to keep trying to put the country back into that mental status of the 60s in that turmoil, it is not like that in this country anymore. And if someone says, yes, it is, no, it's not, okay? It is not like that anymore. Yes, there are places that are racist. There are people that are racist. Guess what? Racist people exist all over the world. You know, Chris Matthews said that racism, his definition of racism is white people wanting to rule the world or some, something to that effect. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but it was the white race only. And that's not what the definition of racism actually is. Go look it up and you'll see. Racism exists in every culture and every country and every corner of this planet. Okay? It's used to keep us all divided. That's one. Two, the masses' ignorance of what racism really is, or what any of it means, is another way that we're all divided and that we're all controlled and that they manipulate the hell out of us. Because most people have no clue. They have no clue. People think, I saw Lisa Bloom, a blonde-haired white woman, okay, on, I think it was MSNBC, saying that George Zimmerman saying effing punk well, that's a derogatory term, and he, he meant that because there was racist tones behind it because he, you know, he, he saw that Trayvon was a black guy. But if Trayvon called him a cracker, well, that's not a racist term because cracker is not a racist term. Cracker's like, oh, you crazy cracker, ha, ha, ha. No, it's not. Cracker refers to the sound the whip made, the <laughs> That's where the term cracker comes from. The cracker was the slave driver. Snap the whip. Uh, I thought it was because we're just salty, man. Or crack the damn whip. Is. Well, you see, people need to educate themselves and whatever. I mean, it, look, it is what it is. I've been called a cracker. I actually had an interesting conversation with a guy one night. He called me a cracker, and I turned around, and I responded by calling him the dreaded N-word. And he just looked at me, and I said, well, did you like that? He said, no. I said, I don't like being called cracker, so now you, you, we're on the same page. And he was like, whoa, oh, I, I kind of get that. And I was like, yeah, because I, I, I had to bring it down to you know, your level, make it affect you a little bit, I guess. But it's like I live in South Florida, and I get called gringo. Okay, I've been called gringo multiple times, dude. That's a derogatory term. I don't think if pe people, a lot of white people go, oh, that's just, that's just ha, ha, ha. It's just a nickname. No, it's actually really a derogatory term for a white person uh, coming yeah. from anybody in the, the Latino community. Yeah. Do I get all kerfluffled over it? No. Yes, uh, ker kerfluffled. Yes. Well, I you mean, do. you know what I mean, like, dude. You know what? Because I look past what the hell it. What kind of word is that? Kerfluffled. Yeah, it's from my grandmother. I can't get it. It's one of those words. <laughs> one of those words that stuck with me from the time I was about four years old. Raj, because I'm just like, wow. I know. Nice I know. That's where I got it from. My grandmother was born in like the 1900s, so like the early 1900s so you know she a couple of those old school words stuck with me but uh seriously i you know i mean i understand how people could get emotional over stuff but part of that emotion comes from lack of understanding yeah. you know one of the best things i ever learned was from the stupid movie roadhouse when patrick swayze he's, he's he plays the cooler and he's looking at all the bouncers and he says so if some guy comes up to you and says your mother's a whore and what do you do and the guy goes oh i'm getting a fight and i'd knock him out and he goes well why is it true? Is your mother a whore? It, it's really just a bunch of words put together to get a reaction out of you. Well, if you understand that at a basic level, that's, you'll, you'll understand how they use emotions to play everybody. And that's what they're doing. That's why people are pissed off. What you see on TV is pure emotion. And the media is not doing their job because they're sitting there with the big stick stirring the pot. They're not doing their job. They're actually causing part of the problem right back now what do i mean when i said before that it's not the 1960s well it's not okay things aren't the same way but what they're trying to do is they're trying to push us back in that direction at least mentally anyway they're trying to push people back in that direction emotionally what you see on tv right now is mob rule democracy at, actually at its finest see we're a democratic republic actually we're a constitutional republic if you want to really call it proper okay that's what this country was founded as, not a democracy. A democracy is 51% telling the other 49% what to do. Okay, What you see on TV is mob rule. People are mad because they didn't get their way, and they're going to go out and they're going to commit violence. 
Screw the laws. Screw you. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to act out emotionally. Yet, it's permitted. Well, the, the cops are out there. Really? I've seen video of the cops backing up and retreating, standing down. Who gave them that order? Why? Why the Oakland PD stand down? Why was that? Well, see, this, ha- this has to happen. They need to do this. If the media really was the media, if they actually were going to do their job, well, then they would be debunking this stuff. They would be putting out real information, okay? But they're not. They would be trying to calm everybody down, but they're not. What they're doing instead is they're going around saying, oh, my God, it's Florida's full, you know, full of racists, that stupid jury, uh, the stand-your-ground law. They're attacking the stand-your-ground law like, like it gets going out of style, which is completely ignorant because Zimmerman didn't use the stand-your-ground defense. But they're going to attack the, the law anyway because they're going to try to see what they're going to do. This is how they manipulate. They know people are emotional right now. They've stirred the pot, and now they start to change some of the dialogue. So now it's, let's not get mad at the situation between George Zimmerman and Trayvon. Trayvon is now dead because people have the right to carry concealed weapons in Florida, and Trayvon is dead because of the stand-your-ground law. Although the stand-your-ground law was not used as a defense, it's still blamed for his death. So shall we... Shall we blame rain for his death? Shall we blame global warming for his death, too? Shall we blame any other innocuous thing? Or uh, not maybe innocuous, but any other, um, uh, anything else that's not related to his death? Yes, the gun, I guess, that Zimmerman used, you could say, was related, but is, is a gun that I maybe own, or a gun that Joe maybe owned, or a gun that my, maybe, like, my grandfather owned at one point, or a gun that, like, uh, you know, I don't know, Joe's uncle, twice removed, owned at one point. I, is that responsible for his death? No. Is Joe's right to defend himself? Is my right to defend myself at fault for his death? No. Who's at fault for his death? Well, I would say it's a 50-50 thing. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's all George Zimmerman's fault and, 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 and not any of Trayvon Martin's fault. I would say it's a, at least a 50-50 thing, maybe, maybe more on one side than the other. Yeah, I'd have to, I would have to see some of the same fa- – all of the same evidence uh, that I guess the jury saw or, or, or that, the, that there is. But from best I could tell, it's at least a 50-50 thing, more, more so with a lot – with I would say at least in my opinion with the fault falling on Zimmerman because he was older. He carried a gun. He should have had a better head on his shoulders to, to do what he did. Uh, he kind of created the situation where it, it, it le- eventually ended up leading to the kid's death. Myself, I think ahead, and I would, I would think, oh, man, if this happens and this, and this kid tries to jump me, I'm going to end up shooting him, and then I'm, I'm going to kill the person all for what because they were walking around, and I really don't know if they were doing anything bad. That's how I would have thought. But personal not everybody re- thinks like that. Personal responsibility is really what it all comes down to, dude. And the fact of the matter is you act like a thug, you're going to get treated like a thug. That's just the way it is. And whether you like it or not, that's the cold, hard truth. That's not saying that what George Zimmerman did was right. But when you go looking for trouble, you're going to find it. Because trouble has more than enough to go around, if you know what I mean. Well, that's why Zimmerman couldn't use the stand your ground defense. Because he actually was the aggressor in the situation at first. Like, yeah. I, 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 you know, regardless of what yeah, obviously Trayvon wasn't walking around trying to rob the place. Okay, they 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 were able to ascertain that. So he Zimmerman did. He was the aggressor, and the stand your ground law states that if you're the aggressor and you have a you know a concealed weapon on you, uh, you have a firearm on you, um, you have to do everything in your power to not use that firearm and get out of that situation. And if if you can't get out of the city, you know, it's it's not that you have a duty to, but it, it, the law, because there is no duty to retreat, but the, I shouldn't say get out of the situation. I should, it's like de-escalate the situation. You should do everything in your power to try to not escalate it further. And Zimmerman did the exact opposite of that. And he didn't de-escalate it. He actually escalated it further to the point where it led to him drawing his firearm and killing him. So that's why the law wouldn't have covered him. And he would have lost actually if he had stuck with that. So. They were smart. We'll be right back. So, I don't want to interject too much. My, you know, I don't like my personal thoughts on the the trial, this or that, because I actually didn't pay much attention to it. Um, I, you know, I, 
I knew there would be an outcome. Uh, I, I knew either way people would get upset. I knew there would be more people upset if he was found not guilty, but it, it, realistically I knew there's more important things going on. Um, but I, I have to talk about this stuff tonight because if I don't, uh, people aren't, uh, there are going to be some people that do buy into the, the, uh, the race baiting or the, uh, the, the emotional part of it at least. And I say that because I see a lot of smart people, people I respect, uh, you know, taking a side, whether it be Zimmerman's side or even, you know, Trayvon's side. I, I saw a really smart individual post something on Facebook the other day. I can't believe Zimmerman's getting his gun back that he used to kill Trayvon with. Well, it's his property. What would you like them to do with it? Well, he killed somebody with it. Ooh, what does that make the gun inoperable? Yeah, you know I mean, people are weapons that the military uses kill. I don't see them getting melted every time they shoot somebody. Jesus, the Marine Corps would be, they would be out of weapons in a day. You know what I mean? Well, you think a rifleman in the Marine Corps shoots his, his magazine and takes his gun and throws it? I can't use this anymore. I killed somebody with it. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. And they got mad that he was getting his weapon back. And I said, look, you may not agree personally with the outcome of the trial. That's fine. But that, that, that's his personal property. Don't you agree with property rights? Yeah, I would get mad if they took my stuff. Or, I, well, that's his property. He was found not guilty. He's, they, by law, they have to let him go. But I don't like it. But that doesn't matter. You know, yeah, what does it matter if you don't like it? Get the hell out of here. But you know what I mean? That's the same mentality that, like, it, it's like you, you rally against that mentality when it's taxes or something else or your personal freedoms, your personal property rights. When it's but convenient you, for you. Exactly. That's very, really what it's all about, dude. Very sad, dude. Very sad. We are a very self-centered culture, just the way it is. I mean, all of Western society, for the most part, extremely self-serving and self-centered. And that doesn't mean I'm, like, again, I'm not taking a personal side either way. I don't have a side. I'm neutral in this whole thing because I'm not getting involved in that. Okay? That's, that's something to get you dragged in, you know, make, get the media getting you to pick a side, Okay, is that's trying to get you bogged down in this. That's another part of this uh, psyop, if you will. They 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 want to get you involved in this. It's a way to distract you and get people arguing amongst each other. Um, so I'm not saying whether Zimmerman was right or wrong. I, I personally, I mean, okay, I, 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 he. I think I said this before. Again, he could have. He should have de-escalated the situation as best he could. He didn't have to escalate it the way he did. Uh, Whatever, and that once blows start getting thrown, it is what it is. Obviously, he, I mean, he felt he was in danger enough that his life was in danger that he needed to use the weapon. Was he really in that much danger? Uh, that doesn't, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 nobody was there. That's the problem. It was just those two, and one of them is dead. So, uh, like the old saying goes, it was Zimmerman's word versus a dead man's. Okay. Uh, and it is what it is. What I find more disgusting out of the whole thing, because see, everybody's like, oh my god, a teenager was killed, so it's okay to kill children now? Uh, well, um, your president that you guys love so much uses drones to kill little kids every day. Even kids as you know, young as infants, blowing them up into little tiny pulpy pieces all over the place. Oh, but it's not in this country. It's in Afghanistan, where it's a bunch of brown people wearing turbans on their heads. So it doesn't matter, right? Or in Iraq, or Pakistan, or anywhere else where we've used these things and killed innocent people. That doesn't matter, because they're brown, Popeye. They don't count. It only matters when it's, you know, American children killed here in America do people get pissed off. Okay, just like Sandy Hook. What about all the kids that get killed in Chicago every day in gang violence? Ah, uh, no, they don't, yeah. I'm Where's the marches for them? Nah. Where's Al Sharpton? Where's Jesse Jackson for them? Where's the attention to them? Aren't they equal? I would say so. But I guess you wouldn't say so because that doesn't fit the narrative. That just goes to show that they're using this for manipulative purposes. Okay? That's right. And that's why I have... California Condor? I mean, that thing was hunted down relentlessly to the point where there was only seven of them. I mean, seriously, that's how ridiculous this is. I mean, I could come up with so many different examples of how we should be outraged by something, yet it's only when the mainstream media prompts you to 
when they're saying, well, there's going to be riots in the streets. Nobody's thinking of that. Not well, that, until you start all that propaganda. Right, and then you get the, these young kids. Man, if Zimmerman gets off, I'm going to go out and start knifing people. Man. Now, first of all, where's that kid's parents? If you're, if you're that kid's parent, you failed. The importance you, of family. You, yeah, you suck. Okay, if, you, if that's your child, you failed epically as a parent. Okay, you failed. You did a horrible job. And if you are a parent, if you're older, because there were, there were women out there with their kids, you know, when, when they were rioting out in L.A., there were women out there with their kids that were young. There were people that, did, you know, uh, reporters and said stuff that said, you know, there, there were a lot of young kids, and you could see that there were kids in, in some of the areas. You know, they were younger. You, you're a horrible parent for exposing your child to that and, and programming your child to be like that and to be an idiot. I mean, you're just perpetuating the problem. Doesn't anybody get this? Doesn't anybody get that getting pissed off and acting <laughs> like thugs just proves a point? Now, all you're doing, if, if you're against Zimmerman, right, if you're, if you're mad that he shot Trayvon, if you're, if you're mad because it's another young black youth gunned down, and you're right, there is way too many young black men getting put into the grave in this country. Unfortunately... I would say something. What is it like? Something like seventy-five or eighty percent of that is black-on-black violence. How yeah. come that is not being addressed? How come that stuff is paved under the rug? But when it's somebody with pale enough skin to pass as white, even though Zimmerman's not white, he, if if you want to look at him, he's he's white bread. No, actually, he's not. He's half Peruvian. And then you got people running around. We're going to go kill Mexicans now. Yeah, yeah, because. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, that's what I mean. Ignorance, man. And, and then, and then you got, then you got thugs like Holder at the NAACP. He's a real thug. I mean, he's master. He's like Darth Vader thug. Holder rips stand your ground laws, saying that uh, there needs to be a national review of stand your ground laws. Oh, really? Just like there needs to be a federal review of George Zimmerman. He may have been violating his rights. R really? Look, you know what? I'll let you do a federal review of the Stand Your Ground laws just as soon as you do a federal review yeah. of the whole gun walking. Yeah, thing, fast, fast and, furious and furious laws. Yeah, there you go. How about that? How about yeah? Oh, oh, what? What? What now? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I see. I, I mean, really? We demand justice. Hey, Holder. You know what? Why don't you? Recuse yourself from everything and just, you know. How about you rec recuse yourself from breathing <laughs> and your heart beating? Well, he needs to at least recuse himself from his job. No, from I'm serious, dude. He needs to recuse. It, it offends me. I look at him and I am offended. Absolutely offended. I just, it, honestly, dude, it, it, it really, I, it amazes me how people are like, if you bring up, I've even heard conversations where if you bring up Fast and Furious, people say, oh, that's just a conspiracy theory by the right-wing extremist. That's yeah, racist. Nothing happened. Really? Why don't you go ask Brian Terry's parents if you think it's a racist conspiracy theory that they were running guns? Yeah. Why, why don't you ask them? Why don't you ask the police chief in Mexico that was just killed recently? Why, why don't you ask his family if it's a conspiracy theory that they were running guns to the drug cartels? I mean, it's, it, it just, the level of ignorance in this country is so high, and it's because everybody relies on, they, they get their news from CNN or MSNBC, and only when it's something that they've been programmed to feel that's important. Otherwise, they're too busy watching, you know, Dancing with the Stars or paying attention to Twitter or Facebook or what their friends had for breakfast because, hey, knowing what your friend ate two hours ago for his, you know, the last meal that they, they, they were able to uh, engulf, that's more important than, oh, I don't know, learning who really controls things and, you know, learning about the economy or how the monetary system really works, which actually isn't that complicated at all. It takes about five minutes to understand what modern money mechanics really is. That's actually the book the Fed put out. But I digress. That level of ignorance is what's causing so many problems because people are so ignorant, dude, that they don't understand. Like, there's a lot of people that would have just listened to the past two minutes of our conversation, and it would be like a deer in headlights, you know what I'm saying? They'd be drool. 
coming out the corner of their mouth, looking at us like, what did you guys just say? Money what? A mechanic makes how much money? And you're like, no, man, I didn't say a mechanic. <laughs> Never mind. Just go bag my grocery. I mean, that's the problem. Yeah, people exactly. are people are to that point, dude, where they're not using their brains anymore, homie. So when they when they hear Lisa Bloom on TV say, no, cracker's not a racist term. It most certainly is a. Ra- if you if you want to go there, it is. It's a it's a racist slur, just like any other. Uh, racist slurs out there. Look, if you want to see, by the way, how many racist slurs out there, I don't remember the exact name of the website, but it, it's something like the Racial Slur Database. Just look that. Yeah, but but let me let me say this too. Uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. What happened to that? Well, that's what the, the hell th- happened to that, dude. So what if somebody calls you, uh, you know, uh, the N word, a WAP, a Jew, or whatever? The, you know, it doesn't matter what you are. Let me tell you something. They're just names. They're just words. That's all they are. You know, that's that's the thing that people need to understand. Yeah, don't let that define you, dude. Good grief, man. If we're that shallow, we're screwed. And, Seriously. And, and you know what? Back when I was a kid, I remember when you could go to the store. See, this is how we're retarded. This is what I said. The country's gone backwards. And we're going backwards into this thinking like they're trying to get the mentality back like we're back in the 60s because, you know, I remember when I was a kid growing up in the 80s and 90s, you could tell a dirty joke to you know each other or to a friend, you know, family member, whoever, um, especially one that might have been like if you had a uh, – say you were friends with a black guy growing up and you guys would crack on each other and, and make jokes at one another. That was okay. And still, that, that does happen here or there. But now – People are more, they get more butthurt about it, and it's because... Because they've been programmed to be sensitive. PC crap. It is. That's exactly what it is, and they do it on purpose. And and that's the problem, is it's, you know, there's desensitization, and then there's sensitization. You're just like, ah, you know, oh, gosh, I'm so offended by that. No. I'm sorry. Guess what? You need to grow a set. Well, you know, you the, need to like get some tough skin. The First Amendment's about unpopular speech, right? That's right. So it's unpopular, man. I tell you what, I when I went to high school, I was the minority. I know how it felt. Come on, man. You just you, that, that's what you do. You got to persevere. We're the minority now. Guess what? We're persevering. Us fighting for truth. People need to stop letting a, someone else's thoughts Why, you're define a them. Hatter. You're a tinfoil hatter. You're a tinfoil hatter. Yeah, because I, I won't let someone else's thoughts about me define me. You know, yeah. I get, you had Fritz Springmeier on your show, dude. Come on. I know. He, I'm a tinfoil he hatter. Wrote, he wrote about the Illuminati. Do you think they actually exist? Come on. Dude, you're nuts. Right. I'm not. Like a tune bin. Right, but you go back to watching MSNBC. <laughs> okay, I think I will. Rachel Maydow, yeah. Actually, you should turn on CNN. You'd probably like Piers Morgan. <laughs> Piss Morgan. You'd probably find him intellectually stimulating. No. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible, but... <laughs> yeah. Right. When I hear him, it's like... When he talks, all I hear is Charlie Brown's teacher. It, like, I have to actually pay attention to actually hear the words that come out of his mouth. I just hear... Wonk, 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 wonk. <laughs> Well, because it's kind of pointless and... Dude, ignorance. Perfect example on his show. Oh. The, the girl that was, I don't know, his Trayvon's friend or whatever, she came on and she couldn't oh, even formulate... Chantel, Chantel. Or she couldn't even formulate a sentence. And you know what? That's a perfect example of the American educational system at its finest. But hey, public schools are good for our kids. They're doing a great job. Keep funding them. We'll be right back. No, I'm not being mean when I say that she's ignorant that girl unfortunately is ignorant you can see she can't even formulate a full sentence when she's talking to peers okay and it, it's it's unfortunate because that's actually a product of the, the public school system that's uh, all kids are starting to come out that dumb it's cool to be stupid well Think that's about it. well you, that's what she pretty much said on air last night she was like you know uh, that's old school. My my generation's new school. And if you looked in the audience, there's people in the audience like younger girls, and they're and, and they're no, they were nodding their head, dude. They weren't booing. They were clapping and cheering her. Like, no, I'm booing it. So it's it's hip to be stupid, basically. But it, but it's but it's been that way for a while. I mean, think about 
how it was even when we went to school. It was the same thing, you know. There were the nerds, there were the geeks, they were uh, they were they were kind of banished, if you will, you know, and picked on and everything else and bullied because they were smart, because they achieved. And, you know, it was cool to be stupid. It really was. And, and now it's just, it's gotten out of control. Now it's gotten out of control. Because, it real, I mean, they really are stupid. Like, I noticed a long time ago the kids were getting dumber, but now yeah. it's getting out of control, dude. I mean, kids are really just, I, I remember saying to my mother probably about, I don't know, 15 years ago, I said to her, people getting stupider or is it just me? Yeah. She, and, and she was like, no, I think people are getting stupider. But yeah. that's not the kids' fault, too. I mean, you have to remember that, that these curriculum are constantly being updated. I mean, if you want to look at the hijacking of the American school system, uh, go back and look at the Reese Commission and all of the findings of, uh, of Norman Dodd and, uh, uh, with the, endow the endowments, the Ford Foundation, the Guggenheim Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, all these uh, different endowments that went and shaped the um, people that write the curriculums and the textbooks for the, for the school systems. And they've totally hijacked it, and they've totally dumbed people down. They don't even teach cursive anymore. Our founding documents are written in cursive. Good grief. And once, no, hey, once everybody's dead and they don't know cursive, I guess, uh, well, yeah, guys, guess what this says? Yeah, what this really says is. <laughs> well, what did, what did Jefferson say about tyranny? He said uh, freedom is only a generation away from tyranny. Sure. And if you can dumb down the generation and, you know, <laughs> We're screwed. I mean, they were brilliant people. It's dude, amazing what they knew. You know, wh when I see people now, they, they like all these news commentators. They're like, "What do you think Martin Luther King Jr. would say at this? He'd be disappointed about this." His daughter was on with Wolf Blitzer, and she's like, "I think he'd be disappointed a little bit in, in, in the finding." First of all, if your father were alive, young lady, even though you're older than me. Okay, if your father were alive, we wouldn't be where we are today. The world, not just this country, not just uh, civil rights for black people, but the world would be a much different place. And this thing with Trayvon probably would not have happened because people would have been urged to look... Uh, uh, you know, beyond where we are now and use logic and evolve in their thinking. The black community wouldn't have been able to be sold gangster rap and all that other crap and crack cocaine wouldn't have been able to have been marketed so easily to the black community because that's what crack cocaine, crack cocaine was literally invented to be sold to the black community, okay, because they could not afford cocaine. It was a rich white man's drug back in the 80s. But crack rock you could get for five bucks a rock, okay? That's a fact. It was done to destroy the black community. So if Martin Luther King Jr. were still alive, oh no. Not only would the black community be a, uh, much in, in a much better place, but this whole country, everybody in it in the whole world would be in a much better place. And everybody themselves would be better off. So no, this probably would not have happened. But they don't talk about that. They want... They want you to have the hypothetical question of what would Martin Luther King Jr. think about the, 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 the shooting death of Trayvon Martin, okay? Which, it's, it's a hypothetical that if he were still alive, probably would not have happened, okay? To be honest with you. Because the, the, the youth would have been steered in a different direction. The black youth would have been steered in a different direction. Thug life wouldn't have been made to look so cool in Hollywood, at least if it, he, he would have done his best to uh, downplay that and, and, and knock that down. Dr. King was a brilliant man. And to try to, 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 try to hypothesize, uh, you know, uh, uh, about what he would think on a case that, like, again, it probably would not have happened if he were still alive. That's... They're trying. It's a red herring. They're trying to get people to, to, to go down a path that's a, it's a going nowhere. Think about think about what the man actually did, and if he would have even stood for what's going on to the whole culture that created this mess to begin with. Oh, that's going a little deeper than just getting emotional and pissed off at what the newsman said, isn't it? This is 
That requires you to think, ladies and gentlemen, and that's why they do these diversionary tactics, to get people all emotionally riled up so that they can't think. Don't go anywhere. We're going to break. We'll be back in 59 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with hour number two here on tonight's live edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. I am your host, Popeye, from FederalJack.com. It is July 16th, 2013. And tonight, I'm uh, without even... I mean, I could do it with one hand tied behind my back. That's how blatant it is. I, we're just ripping into the, the, the blatant divisionary tactics that you see being pumped out over the media the past 24 to 48 hours. I mean, that's, that's what I would call them. Divisionary tactics at their finest. Why would they do this to us? Why? You have to ask yourself, why would the powers that shouldn't be employ so much money, time, energy, and effort into doing this? And then you realize, as I said before, the only proper way to tear this country apart is to do it from within. Some of the founders actually have quotes to that effect. America is a very strong nation, ladies and gentlemen, whether or not you believe it. It's a very strong nation. And if an outside invader attacked us, people would come together to fight as a nation, as a group. This country has already a history of doing that. Well, if you're going to take over a nation then, coming at us that way, head on, headstrong, is not going to work. So you have to employ different techniques. Perhaps if you are a student of Sun Tzu's The Art of War, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So in order to take on this country... The only way, the only successful way, unless you had like every other country in the world teaming up on us, the only real successful way it would work is to have the country tear itself apart from within. Because this country is not like any other country in the world, is it? After all, it was based, it is based off of a grand experiment. The idea that people could actually rule themselves truly for the first time in history. So this country is really like no other. So to destroy it, well, you have to have a plan like no other. And part of that plan is getting this country to tear apart itself. And then they can bring in whatever country or army or private army or mercenaries or whatever that they're going to bring in to mop up the rest. But the first thing they do is they have the country tear itself apart. Waste its own resources, its own men. Shed its own blood on its own soil. Brother fighting brother. Father fighting son. Hmm, where have I heard this before somewhere in history? It sounds familiar. Hmm. Oh, the Civil War. Hmm. And if you actually research the real history of the Civil War, you'll see that's exactly how that played out. We already came close to losing the country once like this, and they're pushing us in that direction again. Before I forget to remind everybody, I updated uh, some of the archive section over on Federal Jack uh, with uh, some of the newer broadcasts. Well, everything up till about... Uh, the end of June, I'm up to now. Uh, so you can go, and I'll, I'll have everything up within the next few days. And uh, there, there's, you know, there's a bunch of ways you can listen to the archives. You can go over to Unbound and listen to the archives over there. If you want to listen to the stuff I did before I came to Unbound, or you know, and the, the Unbound stuff as well, uh, you can go to my archives over on Federal Jack. Uh, you can just click on the archives link right on the front page there, and it'll bring you to the listing. And they're listed from oldest to newest, uh, newest down at the bottom there. 
And uh, you can click that way, and you can listen right off of the site with the uh, embedded MP3 player that I have. Or if you are on the archive page there, you'll also see a downloadable link right at the top. And if you click that, it brings you to a page, uh, a very old-school directory listing style page that works with everything, everything Apple-based, everything Android, PC, everything. And you can either play it right through the Internet you know, on your player, or you can download them uh, and play them, and those are all commercial-free. So go check out the archives. I often refer to some of the broadcasts I've done in the past, so go check it out. All right, I want to get back into what I was talking about. Now, Joe, when I was uh, in, in the first segment there, when, when I was covering the the reason why they would do this, uh, you know, and for the, the listeners that are just tuning in, I'll, I'll kind of nutshell it again. The reason why they would foment all this uh, hatred and and discord in the country amongst us is because if they have us fighting amongst each other, A, they can manipulate us a lot easier, but B, it serves to tear the country apart, like during the Civil War. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, it, it's an amazing strategy that's worked very well time and time again, and they know that people won't pay attention to history. So... They can just go ahead and use the old plays out of the playbook all they want. See, that's the thing is that these people are very patient. And, but, but you notice that the, the end game is always the same. So it's really it's an amazing thing to, to actually watch history unfold and to read the history of the past because if you know the past, you can predict the future. And so many people don't know that simple fact. All these people that are doing these things, these banksters, everybody, this has all been done before. There's nothing new here. I think the only thing that's new here is the incorporation of technology into the mix, whereas before, really not so much. You know, human beings... Well, now it's easier, for, uh, and they're actually, you know, like Hitler and all them, all these other tyrants in the past, they would have loved to have had the access to the technology that they have now. Can you imagine? Oh, no, yeah, you're absolutely right, dude. I mean, uh, it, obviously it gives them more tools at their disposal. It's also worked to their detriment, uh, more so than ever ever before. I mean, during World War II, they had the underground, you know, and they would uh, send strategic messages uh, via these, you know, uh, pirate transmission stations. Some of them underground, you know, literally underground. But that's how they got information spread around, you know, couriers. Well, now everything's at everybody's fingertips. That's why th these uh, thugs haven't been able to get away with their, uh, their criminality with reckless abandon like they were in the past. You know, now, it's, now they can't control the information stream much like they could in the 80s and before when they promoted this romanticism with corporate America. There's nothing romantic about corporate America, about being a thief, you know? And that's the thing is we, we attack these institute. We don't attack the institutions. Instead, we attack each other. But it's these institutions that are to blame. Let, let me quote is a big new Brzezinski. Oh, I know. I'll try to do my best impersonation of him, too. That evil, cackling little schmiegel like voice he's got. Um, if you remember a couple of years ago, he was at a CFR meeting uh, in Canada, and he was talking about mankind's political awakening. And he said, uh, quote, For the first time, mankind has become politically awakened. For the first time in human history, mankind has become awakened and aware to the differences. Uh, amongst everybody and I, what he meant by that and he gets into it and I, 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 I could go on and on the point is you get the point you get the gist of what he's saying people are awakened for the first time ever this isn't some fictitious story uh, the, this isn't some tinfoil hattery the allegory of the matrix is actually really happening for the first time in human history mankind is truly becoming politically awakened is what he said and they're understanding that there's differences between the haves and the have-nots. They're understanding the drastic differences between the haves and the have-nots. The, the, the 0.1% and the rest of us. And basically, like in Joe's intro, 
you hear Brzezinski say it's easier now to kill a million people. It used to be easier to, to fool a million people than to kill them. Now it's infinitely easier to kill a million people than it is to fool a million people. That's but it's, scary. But it's true. It's absolutely true. They can't control the information stream, but the technology has granted them enough um, <clears throat> firepower and uh, murderous weapons to be, I mean, to be able to just well, go that's ahead the scary and commit thought. genocide on a mass scale. Yeah, that's the scary thought of it, the, the, yeah. or the scary part, whatever you want to say. That's the... That's the part, the, or, or the fact that you actually have these people that are considered great individuals that are just out there openly talking like this. Right. Well, I guess not really open, right? Because you're not supposed to see the meeting. But uh, <laughs> you, you know, they're saying things like, you know, hey, it's easier right now because of things like the internet. It's easier now to just kill people than it is to to try to fool them. Because how how about harp and stuff like that? These advanced technologies that really make nuclear weapons obsolete. You know, scalar weapon systems, things and like that. And if you know using... about HARP, Joe, what don't you know about? Exactly. Because you know as well as I do, if the military is like, yeah, whatever, if, if they don't care about the conspiracy theories going out there around uh, about HARP, which are... The which stuff is a hundred-year-old technology. And, and it's, it's, it's probably, you know, a, I would say probably 99% of it's true, if not all of it, okay? It is all true. Yeah, it, the it's stuff all they can Tesla's do with it. brainchild. I mean, if you don't know about Tesla, read about Tesla. Right, so if, Tesla if, they, don't, and, if they don't really care that you know about it, right, because if, if they really, you know, True TV did air that episode, right? Yeah. So yeah. if, I mean, the Police State episode, never saw that one again, but the, the one about Harp, they replayed that over and over again. So if they really gave a crap about you knowing about that technology, do, do you think you'd know about it? No. So that makes you have to think, hmm, if this is advanced and I consider this advanced and I know about this and they don't have an issue with that, what do they have that I don't know about that makes this look like a calculator compared to my smartphone now? You know what I mean? I totally know what you mean. But, but again, you know, this speaks to the ignorance of not just the American people, the people of the world. It's, it's weird. You have an awakening on one side. You have consciousness on one side. And the inability for the powers that be to be able to execute their plans without being exposed. So now that's very hard to do. But people are still asleep just en masse. And they're flooded with information. Senseless, mindless information. Like uh, TMZ and uh, the NFL. And everything's so in your face. And all this information's at your fingertips. And oh my gosh, I can refill my prescriptions on my, smart, on my smartphone now. And everything's so convenient. And there... But, but it also feeds to your, to the uh, society's self-serving and self-interest. So that's what they do. You notice how people walk down the street now, they don't even look up. Their, their heads are buried in their smartphones or they're texting or whatever. I mean, that's where Walking society's down the going. Street. Dude, go to a restaurant. Yeah, forget it. People don't even talk anymore. Or if they do, they're doing it while they're reading whatever. I mean, could you imagine 25 years ago, 30 years ago? If you walked into a restaurant and everybody's reading the paper at Dude, the same time. Can you imagine 25, 30 years ago if you're sitting at the table with your family and you attempted to play a video game or some sort of device or even read a book while you're at the table with your family? My mother would have firmly implanted that device where the sun don't shine. Oh, okay? easy. And yeah. I, I, would have, I would have had to use thought to constrict my inner stomach muscles to play the video game from, from that point on, onward because there would have been no tolerating that. My mother, honestly, there was no, there, there was none of that crap. My, uh, you know, once in a while maybe, but uh, honestly, when it, when it came time to, and, and my father tried to do the same thing. He tried to instill the same thing. It's that, that sense of family. Like there has to be some period of time where you sit down and you have a conversation with your family, and you discuss what's going on during the course of the day. It doesn't matter if you really want to. We did. And as we got older, we would be like, hey, you know, when we saw, if I saw my brother, hey, dude, what's up? You know, hey, what's up? When I was a kid, we didn't have smartphones. I mean, yeah. cell phones just came out when I was in my late 20s. 
Okay, like they it, it, they became prolific for people to be able to to you know pay for them you know without you know seven dollars a minute you know what I mean right uh, it, it, I was in my late twenties by the time that that's those things came out you know when I was a kid beepers came out I think when I was like fifteen sixteen years old and we considered that amazing technology about oh my god a pager right I mean. <laughs> Uh, I remember a time before oh, any yeah. of this crap where kids use their imaginations, Joe. Imaginations. Boy, oh boy. And they were actually taught to think. Oh, those bygone days. But you're right. I mean, the, that's the thing. But, but see, imagination is such an integral part of uh, growing up, of being a kid, of um, development. And it's being taken away. I mean, really, it is. Think about... Uh, For example, one of the reasons why we decided to homeschool our children is simply because our oldest son was spending probably just as much time doing homework as he was going to school. So if if that's the case, and they're not going to teach him everything that he needs to know during the day, and then we have to teach him at night anyway, well, then what the hell is he going to school for? Oh, yeah, socialization. Let me tell you something. My son, the homeschooler, is infinitely more socialized than any of the uh, poor, mindless zombies that inhabit our public school system. And that's, and that's, of course, I'm stereotyping. Not all children are like that. But I'm telling you, they're at a huge disadvantage being in the indoctrination centers. Well, dude, again, all you have to do is look... At the children nowadays, and uh, again, you could look. You could. I forget the girl's name. You, you could look at her. She. She's. A, she's an example, but she's not. Uh, she's not the only one. In fact, she's representative of what most young kids. Uh, I, I mean, maybe she's a little bit more extreme example because she mm-hmm. can't really formulate a full sentence. But I mean, these kids that are coming out of the schools today, they're. They they're ignorant, and that's how come they're led around by the nose when you know over emotional issues with stuff like this. A lot, yeah. and as they get even uh, generations, you know, between we'll say like the teenagers and you know your age, my age, Joe. There's there's a whole huge section of you know slew of generations in there that actually, you know, they. They buy into this, and they're easily manipulated over the same stuff because they're, they were raised that, – that's that generation that, where they started raising people not to think and not to use their heads. And, you know, it's, it's a scary thought when people – people don't realize that when you're raising your kid, you're literally raising the future generations of this country. I don't think they re- parents realize the damage they can do and the positive – stuff the positivity the positive outcome that could happen too but i don't think they realize the damage that they could uh bring about uh, if they really do a, a horrible job raising their kids joe i know you got to go cuz i know you're out of time yep um thanks for coming on brother thanks for hey man me. thanks for having me it was awesome two and a half hours tonight wow hot diggity look at you like a friggin champ yeah <laughs> I uh, I go night night now. <laughs> I don't blame you, brother. I know you have to get up at the the crack of dawn. The crack of dawn, yeah. So thanks for coming on and uh, going over this stuff with me. I appreciate it, and I appreciate your view on things, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. We will be right back. Check Joe show out the Fleet and Rink. I hate to have to dedicate the two hours to even covering this stuff. Wish there was. Other things like, you know, I wish this wasn't around so I could talk about a ton of other things I'd like to get into. But it's important that I stay focused on this because uh, it has to be broadcast. It has to be put out there on the airwaves. People need to hear it. It needs to be said. There's a bigger agenda at work here. There's a much larger agenda at work here, and if you can't see that, never in the history of this country have you seen a government push push a subject the way you are, seeing them do it here, pushing the, you know, you, have, you see a holder being pressed from all different angles, being Political pressure being put on him and the DOJ to 
open an investigation into Zimmerman. He violated Trayvon's civil rights. They keep pushing this. It's like it, they won't allow the wound to, to even start to heal. They won't allow the healing process to begin. The healing process keeps getting stifled. I'm not saying people need to forget and there, there isn't good, valuable lessons to be learned from this. I told you, personally, I think Zimmerman was in the wrong for provoking the situation to begin with. I'm that guy. I'm the guy that thinks 10 steps ahead. So I, I, if I were him, I, I would have tried to f figure how this could go really bad and I would have just stayed out of it. Call the cops and let the cops handle it. Let them come. And once the cop gets there, then, then maybe then the cop would be like, all right, show me. Okay, fine, you're here. Johnny Law is here. Really nothing should, quote, be left up to interpretation. We all, have, we all know how that goes anyway. When the law shows up, things could go bad or good. Usually lately they go bad. Anyway, he should have used a little more thinking. And because of his actions, it, it led to someone's death. Uh, that doesn't mean that I, uh, I think uh, Trayvon was innocent at all in it. I, again, I, I think at the very least it was a 50-50, if not you know, 60-40, with Zimmerman getting at least 60% of, you know, of it. Because like I said, as a, uh, a registered or um, per, uh, permitted or whatever licensed concealed carry holder uh, and an older male even though I'm sure he didn't know how old Trayvon was he should have used his brains better he should have thought better that's just me uh, but I I don't really try to take that that's my view on it I don't have a side either way um, there is no side in this it was a tragic event it was a murder case it went through the court system and the prosecution lost their case uh, Part of the reason the prosecution, well, most of the reason the prosecution lost their case, if not all of it, is because they didn't have case. And they were they rushed to do it because of political pressure. See, if they had waited and done things properly and were going to bring a case against him, you'd bring a nice, strong, solid case against him if you wanted to, you know, if he was guilty and you wanted to put him in jail. But they didn't have a strong, solid case. The uh, Angela Corey, the... the uh, special prosecutor, the one that was appointed, she, uh, a citizen's grand jury, uh, just brought charges against her for her misconduct in bringing charges against George Zimmerman in this trial. So, I mean, there's a lot that you're you're not told. There's a lot that's kind of hidden away. The only thing you're told is the emotional aspect of it because they want people to get pissed. There's people getting pissed for no reason. I mean, it, it, it did it affect you? You know, there's people riding out in California and destroying people's uh, private property and you know public property. For what? How is that going to help? Now you're just... If anything, if you're pissed off because you don't want to be stereotyped, I hate to tell you this, but when you go out and do stupid things like that, you're, you're fitting yourself right into the stereotype that you say you hate. So why not do the opposite? Why not use some of this energy that everybody's got in a good manner. Why don't we start to try to do positive things with this? You're not going to solve any problems using the same level of mentality and thinking that created them. Which is what going out and rioting is doing. Isn't that violence? And aren't you protesting that there was violence against Trayvon? So how does going out and being violent, how does that honor him? It doesn't. Use your heads. Do not be manipulated. Don't allow the powers that shouldn't be to manipulate you. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. They're trying to manipulate people via their emotions. It's like a huge logical fallacy happening in front of your eyes. It's an appeal to emotion. And when people are emotional, there is no rational thought going on. There is no intelligent thought going on uh, any semblance of intelligent thought going on none whatsoever at all you wish you could you wish you could get some but there isn't emotion makes you stop thinking clearly let me ask you a question i've I, i've i've done this before 
So we're going to do a little experiment, but I want you to think to yourself for a second. I want you to ask yourself this question. Think to yourself. We've all made mistakes in our lives, things that we walk around with, even if you <clears throat> you say that you don't regret it. I'm sure if you look back on it and think about it hard enough, it would probably piss you off even if you let it go by now. But there's, there's that one thing or maybe a couple times you did something here or there. Now, I'm willing to bet that 95% of those bad decisions were probably made based on emotion, right? So my question to you would be, if you look back in your past, can you think of a good decision based solely on emotion that you made that 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 actually turned out uh, uh, you know well? Probably not, right? Usually, a decision based solely on emotion does not bode well at all, and usually ends up blowing up in your face. Well, that's what's going on right now. The country is being told by the media and the government and by all these loud mouths. And the media is a propaganda wing for the government. Understand that, okay? We have a state-run media. That's the way it is. A lot of people think we have a free media in this country. Wake up. We don't live in the illusion that you think we do, all right? I know a lot of people are waking up, but more people need to pull their heads out of their butts. We don't live in this, this make-believe land where the media is not actually a wing of the government. But anyway, they're, they're pushing this because they need to keep people divided. They need to. It helps them control it. They will control us, but it also helps tear the country apart as a whole. Okay? They need to do this. They, do you think that it fits their agenda to have people working things out logically and sitting and rationally talking? No. That's why they stoke the emotional flames. If they really wanted to do something good for this country, if they really wanted to make a positive change, instead of going on air and bloviating about things and saying that racism, 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 and this and that and everything else, and it's all, all, always why people are evil, that's basically the, the, the undertone of this because they're trying to push this race war. Okay, again, Zimmerman wasn't white. He was, he was well, half white, half Peruvian. Okay, so uh, if you really want to go that route, if you really want to learn anything. But they, they use this case as a, a way to push the white versus black, uh, you know, racial tension, right? Even though a lot of that stuff, I'm not saying people don't have racist tendencies, but there's a lot of stuff that people have been, you know, all, all the, the steps forward, all the steps forward that have been taken, they're pushing us back, and everybody thinks that well, we're we're taking strides forward and standing up for this stuff and and doing. Saturday, we're going to have a hundred a hundred marches across different cities in the country. Says Sharpton. Really, Al? Are you acting as a representative of the media? Are you acting as a political activist at that time? Because see, you go on air five days a week, acting like a representative of the media, but then you're going to go out and you're going to host political activities and rile people up. So. How do you have journalistic integrity? Like you are now, journalists aren't supposed to be part of the story. They're supposed to report on the story, and you are reporting on a story and now becoming part of the story. Although you are already part of the story, aren't you, Al? Because you made yourself a part of the story last year. Well, the family called me, and I'm sure you didn't hesitate to jump on it. Of course, this, this case was uh, o over a month old at the time. But uh, look, the, the point is, they're, they're using this. The, the whole case itself is it's tragic. The whole thing on all sides. There's a young there's a young man that's dead. His future is 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 finished. Zimmerman, his life is it doesn't matter. You know, five ten years down the road, uh, you know, he'll still be George Zimmerman. This case is so known. Everybody knows his face. Uh, so. You know, his life, for all intents and purposes, even if he can live it, he's actually like in a living hell. If you think about it, even if he's out of jail, I mean, what kind of what what kind of quality of life is he really going to have right right now? Trayvon's parents are affected. Everyone's affected, and then now you have people rioting, being stupid, getting arrested, maybe killing other people. There's people killing people in, in, in the country, saying this is for Trayvon. Of course, the media doesn't report about that, but yeah, there's there's black people killing white people here and there in the country, saying thing or kidnapping. One, one jogger says he got kidnapped. Some of this can be made up too. You know, I want to warn people about this. If you noticed right after, and this goes into the the race baiting and the, 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 the visionary tactics, and I didn't bring this up before, and I probably should have, but now that I thought about it, I want to bring this up really quick. 
a lot of the stuff that you see in the news, you, you notice suddenly, and I'm not saying it didn't happen and that stuff isn't reported on, because it isn't. The mainstream media doesn't report on if, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, like four black guys, they, they killed and uh, mutilated a white guy and his, his uh, fiance or his wife, I'm not sure if they were married or maybe she was just a girlfriend anyway, uh, raped him and killed him and then killed and raped her. It was horrific back in 2009, I think it was. And they, it, it was hushed up, really not talked about because it was four black guys, you know, killing two white people. And yeah, not PC doesn't fit the mainstream media agenda. I understand that and everything. But that's a real case. But some of these things, like I saw that this jogger supposedly got kidnapped by a bunch of black guys and they threatened him, but then they let him go and they, they just, they beat him up. No, maybe that's real. I mean, it, there is the chance that that's real. But what if, what if that's not? What if it's not? What if some of these stories, I mean, and I'm not saying that that, I, that story is fake. I'm just using that as an example. There's a couple different stories like that. Some of them are being, there, there's another one that they're saying that there's two kids that they were killed here in Jacksonville. They were shot in a parking lot on Sunday, two brothers. Uh, and the, the story is that the local PD is covering up the fact that it's connected to the, uh, the, the, the case because they supposedly had a free Zimmerman bumper sticker on their car. Well, even the family saying that that's not true, that there was no connection, that there was, there was a words exchanged between two vehicles and one per the people in one vehicle opened fire on the other vehicle, killing the two occupants. But it's going around that this is connected to the, the Zimmerman uh, uh, Trayvon Martin case. And we don't know if it is. But I, I saw a ton of websites running with speculation that it is. A ton of them. And even the family saying, no, no. I mean, is the family in on the cover-up too? I mean, that, why, why wouldn't they, if, if they're, wouldn't that be part of finding the killer? So some of this stuff that you see that's being thrown around out there, that's why, if you notice on Federal Jack, I didn't post any of those stories. I don't have any of the, I don't have the stories of, you know, I haven't posted them. You know, I have the story about the, the, the white couple from a long time ago. I know that's up there, but the, what I'm talking about is I haven't posted any of these stories specifically now. And I had uh, some of these stories of like the jogger and all this other stuff. I haven't put that up because I can't confirm one that, that that's real and that's not somebody, you know, trying to just do something for attention or whatever. I mean, it's not like it hasn't happened before. It's not like, Operatives haven't been caught before faking things during elections. Kids faking things. There was a a Jewish girl a couple of years ago that she, she was on the news up in I think it was New York, and uh, supposedly she was being hunted by neo Nazis because they had left swastikas all over her her dorm room uh, door and everything else, and uh, I, I guess carved in the you know maybe in a wall or whatever it was it was around her college dorm area in the hallways and doorways around it or whatever. So they they set up a camera and it was her doing it to herself. So there's always that too where people see a big case like this and they figure a way to get themselves into the media spotlight and stuff too. We have to look at this stuff with some logic. Don't just look at a piece of information and go, oh, my God, you see now it's a bunch of black people attacking white people. Uh, look, the media, and there is the, the, the you, there is somewhat of a controlled alternate media, too. You know, I mean, there are people that, you know, are, are disinfo people out there that do things purposely. They, they're, every, you know, they're out everywhere. But the alternative media sometimes will bite on something and even unknowingly push it. And that doesn't help the situation either. Look. We have to make sure we look at all of this stuff and make sure, A, that it's verified and that it's factual and that it's true. And B, think if you're going to post something like this, don't just randomly throw it up on your website because it's going to get you, you know, two or 3,000 hits today and it's going to make your Alexa rank drop. Think about what the hell you're doing. Think about what you're partaking in. You're partaking in part of this 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 vicious cycle where you're feeding the opposite end of the, the, the stick. They're, the mainstream media is out there pushing and feeding one end, and now you're feeding the other end. And if it's not true or if it's real information but it's being uh, misconstrued or um, twisted a little bit and you don't even realize it, you're part of the problem. That's why I took myself out of this mainstream or, or – alter. I like to call it the – 
alternative slash mainstream because we have we the alternative media, uh, independent media, whatever whatever you want to call it, has created its own news cycle. Okay, and I've tried to take Federal Jack out of that because I don't want to get sucked into things just like this. I see a lot of well intentioned, you know, well meaning, uh, good intentioned people buying into this stuff and saying, oh, you know, uh, yeah, this case, like I said, the, the two kids in uh, Jacksonville or Orlando, wherever it was, uh, up north Florida, we don't know if that was connected to the case yet. Don't write articles saying, oh, my God, these two white kids were slain and it's connected to the... No. And that kind of speculation, you're doing the same thing the mainstream media did. Now you're feeding the other end. The mainstream media is trying to play it black versus white, and they're feeding the black side, right? You're feeding the white side, if you want to look at it that way, and you're setting it up to have a clash between the two. Stop playing the game. Stop it. Publishers, bloggers... Radio host, seriously, I'm not perfect, but I'm just saying, pay attention. Don't be part of this menace, this mess that they're creating, this division device, because that's what we're doing if you play into that. And if you rush to judgment like that, if you see something on Facebook and suddenly it must be true, and I, you know, I got it from a website that I consider true, well, where'd that website get it from? Do some research. Take five minutes. Look at some of these stories. All these stories, once I looked at them, I'm like, man, I'm not posting any of these. First of all, I didn't want to post them because I'm not going to play into that both sides of the racial tension thing because that's what they want. They're tr- and I call it faux racial tension because they're trying to create it where there shouldn't really be any now. It's 2013. You know, there is no black race or white race or Asian race or Latino race. There's the friggin' human race. We all look a little different. You know what? That's what makes us special. That's what's awesome about us, is the fact that we're all a little different. That's what's awesome about us, our individuality. But you know what, on the inside, we all operate the same. We all have the same basic functions. We all have a soul. We all have aspirations. If you have kids, you want to see your kids grow up and get the finest education and be the best that they could be and make the most out of their lives. Parents all over the world have the same thoughts about their children. Oh, my God, it's amazing. Really, Popeye? Yeah, I know. Woo-hoo! I mean, think. We're humans. Stop allowing the the, the 0.1%. Stop allowing the, the people that consider themselves to be elites. Stop allowing them, the powers that shouldn't be, to control you like a puppet. Via your emotions and your primal responses, your base consciousness. Because that's what we're stuck in right now. That's what you see running around. And that's what the media is doing. Their job is to keep everybody down at base consciousness. So that you can't get up to the next level. Turn your TV off. And don't turn that thing on again until you've got the cable unplugged. And you can put some real informational documentaries on there with some truth in it. Go read a book. Better yet, go make friends with somebody that doesn't look anything like you or sound anything like you. You'll find you have a lot in common. We're going to break. We'll be right back. Even we heal as a team, we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me. And we can stay here, get the shish kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back, our way back, way back. Into, the light. into the light, into the light, into the light, into the light. We can climb out of hell, out of hell, out of hell, one inch at a time. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from. You. I mean, that's that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You find out life's just game in inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, 
every minute, every second. Every second. On this team, we fight for that itch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that itch. We claw our fingernails for that itch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning and losing. Between living and dying. I'll tell you this, in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that itch. And I know if I'm going to have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that inch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now I can't make you do it. You gotta look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now I think you're gonna see a guy who will go that inch with you. No, you don't. You're going to see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're going to do the same for him. That's the team. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. Ideas are bulletproof. The idea that we are all equal is not a farce, is not some far-off dream. It does not require politicians to make bills and to have debates on it. It requires just the understanding of all of us, that we're all equal. We're all in this together. We all see the same sun and the same moon every night. We all reside on the same little blue marble in the sky. The sooner we realize that the differences that we are programmed to believe in really don't matter, and that the slight differences in color or the way we look or how we speak shouldn't be used to categorize us and separate us but things like that should be they should be looked at like they are like they're special that's what makes that person that individual because of the way they look and the way they talk and the way they do things what did Martin Luther King Jr. say? Judge a man not by the color of his skin, but by the content of his character. That's not what's going on. We're using emotion. We're not using logic. We're not judging people. We shouldn't be judging each other, period, first of all, but that's a whole other story. Look, simple solution. You want to get through this? We need to stop buying into the divisionary tactics. We need to stop allowing ourselves to be controlled this way. We need to step out of the matrix. I don't care what color you are, what nationality you are, what God you believe in. You're a human being and we all reside on the same planet. And the sooner we all start getting along the sooner we can explore the cosmos and the oceans and we can cure diseases and evolve. Hello, McFly. As I tap on your head. Hello, anybody home? It's time to wake up, ladies and gentlemen. Let's, let's shed these, these faux differences. These petty differences between us. We're all human. You know what? I love every single one of you. All of you. All of you. I love all of you. Stop buying into the crap. We're out of time. Educate yourselves. 
Remember, the solutions to our problems, ladies and gentlemen, are an inside job. I love you all. I'm out of here.